Hey, so I wanted to make a quick video making sure that we're all crystal clear about what happens at the end of chapter eight. Because it's worded a little bit strangely, but it's obviously a super important couple of scenes. So in your book, the page that I'm looking at here would actually be on um, page 160. Even though you see in the PDF that I've got pulled up, it says 171. This is 160 for you. So if you want to mark this in your own text, this is where you can sort of find it. So here's the gist of it. The same evening um, that Myrtle is killed, George Wilson spends like the whole night up um, being kind of crazy. This dude, Michaelis, is like watching over him, bringing him coffee, trying to get him to calm down. The next day, we get this sort of play-by-play -play of what George Wilson does. So I'm looking like right here, we're getting this like report of what happens after, um, after Myrtle, get, Myrtle gets killed. We're on the next day and it says, um, that George Wilson had told Michaelis he had a way of finding out who had killed Myrtle, who drove the car that hit her. They supposed that he spent time going from garage to garage thereabouts inquiring for a yellow car. On the other hand, no garage man who had seen him ever came forward, and perhaps he had an easier, surer way of finding out what he wanted to know. By half past two, he was in West Egg, where he asked someone the way to Gatsby's house. So by that time, he knew Gatsby's name. So what we get there is that George has figured out that it was Gatsby who was driving this yellow car, or who owned the yellow car, at least, that killed Myrtle. So then I'm gonna skip on over here to the bottom of the next page, um, and Nick writes about who notices what happened. So here at the bottom, I'm down here, it says the chauffeur, he was one of Wolf Sheem's protégés, heard the shots. So all we know here right now is that there were gunshots. Right, and we don't know who shot them or what exactly has happened. But Nick leaves where he is, goes directly to Gatsby's house, and on the next page we get what he sees. There's a couple of things here I'm gonna like annotate and explain because I think it helps this make a lot more sense. So he says, he gets the, the gardener, the chauffeur, um, and they go down and here's what they see at the pool where we know Gatsby um, has decided to float in the pool. This was near the top of the previous page when he wrote, Gatsby shouldered the, Gatsby shouldered the mattress and started for the pool. So we leave off where Gatsby's floating on an inflatable mattress on his pool. And when they get there, and in your books, this is on page 162, here's what we get. There was a faint, barely perceptible movement of the water as the fresh flow from one end urged its way toward the drain of the other. With little ripples that were hard for the shadows of the waves, the laden mattress moved irregularly down the pool. A small gust of wind that scarcely corrugated the surface was enough to disturb the accidental course with its accidental burden. The touch of a cluster of leaves revolved it slowly, tracing like a leg of compass um, a thin red circle in the water. A couple of key things here, I think, um, are this word laden and burden. Laden and burden both mean um, that there's something sort of heavy, like sitting on this mattress. Like it's got a heavy load. Um, and in this case, we know that that is Gatsby. But the fact that it's being called a burden um, or that it's sort of like dead weight laden should be a sign that something is wrong here. And then we get this right here. There's a thin red circle in the water. What could that be if not blood, right? So this is Gatsby's blood. So his body is on this mattress. It's still floating on the pool, but he's dead. He's been shot. Then this passage down here gives us this last little important bit. It was after I, we started toward Gatsby, uh, started with Gatsby toward the house. I think people read this and think that Gatsby's still alive and he's walking toward the house. But what this actually means is that they are carrying Gatsby's body. So they're, they're, they have him, right? But he's not alive, but they still say with Gatsby. So this is Nick and the chauffeur and the gardener carrying Gatsby's body toward the house and a little way off, they find Wilson's body as well. So what we're supposed to understand here is that Wilson shot Gatsby in his pool and then shot himself. Finally, it says the Holocaust was complete. Um, this is kind of confusing because we usually think of the Holocaust as being about what happened in Germany in the 1940s. But remember this book was written in 1925 and the word Holocaust didn't have that real meaning yet. All that means is any sort of like massacre or like violent tragedy. So that's what we're supposed to make up there. So chapter eight ends with George Wilson believing he has exacted revenge for his wife's death, but actually he killed the wrong person, right? Hence this accidental burden. It was not 
uh, Gatsby who killed his wife, but rather Daisy who was driving Gatsby's car.